definition gastritis an inflammatory irritational or erosion of the stomach mucosa types of gastritis can broadly be divided into acute gastritis also called erosive or hemorrhagic gastritis and it can be further classified into chronic gastritis classification of gastritis acute gastritis acute h pylori infection other acute infection gastric gastricides bacterial other than h pylori h helmanani phlegmomanus mycobacterial syphilis viral parasitic and fungal now chronic atrophic gastritis it can be divided into type a type a is autoimmune body predominant type b h pylori related enteral predominant and second indeterminate uncommon forms of gastritis lymphocytic eosinophilic crohn's disease sarcoidosis isolated granulomatous gastritis and russell body gastritis now we will be talking about gast acute gastritis transient mucosal inflammatory process that may be asymptomatic or may be variable or may present as a variable degree of symptoms now the most common cough cause of this acute gastritis are infection acute infection with h pylori include acute gastritis this is also called erosive or hemorrhagic gastritis of these the most common cause of is a use of aspirin and other non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs the third fourth a that these agent cause gastric mucosal damage by inhibiting prostaglandins gastric bicarbonate and mucus disruption epithelial tight junction and altering gastric mucosal microcirculation the mucosal damage can result in either slow upper gi bleeding which can be detected as positive fecal occult blood test or can manifest as massive upper gi bleed now when it is most talked about is h pylori infection it is a short spiral shaped my chorophilic gram negative bacillus in gastric sample on histological examination culture increase activity by endonuclear analysis now when it stains with hematoxylin it is positive it has got an antibodies igg iga to hp and this makes us go for a diagnostic tool 90 to 100% of hp plus enteral biopsy specimen of duodenum patient and 70% of a gu 80% chronic gastritis involves the enteral mucosa 50% with non ulcer dyspepsia pathogenesis the gastric lumen is strongly acidic which ph as close to as 1 more than a million times more acidic than the blood the harsh environment contribute to digest but also has the potential to damage the gastric mucosa itself main mechanism are involved to protect the gastric mucosa mucin secretion by surface fluid cells form a thin layer of mucus that prevent large food particle from directly touching the epithelium second the mucus layer also promote formation of an stripped layer of fluid over the epithelium that protects the mucosa and has a natural ps as 
result of the bicarbonate ions secreted by surface epithelial cells. Finally, the rich vascular supply to the gastric mucosa delivers oxygen, bicarbonates, and nutrients while washing away acid that has been diffused into the lumen property. Acute or chronic gastritis can occur following disruption of any above protective mechanism. Reduced mucosal secretion in elderly increases susceptibility to gastritis. Non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs interfere with the cytoprotective no normally provided by prostaglandins or reduce bicarbonate secretions. Gastric injuries by urea secretion, H. pylori, inhib inhibition of the gastric bicarbonate transporter to amino ammonium ions. direct cell injury to mucous epithelium and stromal cell, excessive alcohol consumption, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, third, ingestion of harsh chemicals, particularly acids, acids or bases, accidentally or by suicidal attempts, decreased oxygen delivery, may explain increased incidence of acute gastritis at high altitude and this is the picture that is showing what is a normal ga ga gastric mucosa there is mucin mucous membrane mucosa then there is muscular muscularis mucosa and some mucosa defend Sieve forces are surface mucin secretion, bicarbonate secretion, mucosal blood flow, apical surface, mem membrane of the is transport, epithelial regenerative capacity, exploration of the prostaglandins. Now, if there is an injury which is caused, this may be caused by H. pylori, non steroidal anti inflammatory aspirin alcohol, gastric hyperacidity, duodenal gastric reflux. Increase damage and impaired de defense. This leads to ischemia, shock, delayed gastric emptying time and as a host factor. When there is an ulcer, the ulcer will have a necrotic debris non-specific acute inflammatory cells, granulomatous injuries, and fibrosis. Mechanism of gastric injuries and protection. Diagram illustration, the progression and more mild form injury and ulceration that may occur with acute or chronic gastritis. Also include layer of necrosis, inflammation, a granulomatous tissue, G, but a fibrotic scar which takes time to develop in overpresence in chronic lesion. Now, pathophysiology high level of acid production, normal gastric mucosa, acute H. pylori inf infection leading to chronic H. pylori, pylori infection that leads to antral predominant gastritis leading also leads to duodenal ulcer. Chronic H. pylori infection lead to non-atrophic pangastritis. It can also lead to corpus predominant atrophic gastritis leading to interstitial metaplasia, dysplasia and ultimately gastric cancers. Non Atrophic pangastritis can lead to asymptomatic H. pylori infection or it can lead to mild hypolymphoma. And all these are can lead to ultimately gastric cancer. 
pathophysiology. Normal gastric mucosa is very rare when we talk of acute infection, send person, if there be, it lead to chronic infection. This can be antral predominant, non-atrophic pangastritis, or it may be corpus predominant, atrophic gastritis, multifocal atrophic gastritis. The percentage of each is that, that this can, is about 40%, then it can lead to interstitial metaplasia that can lead to dysplasia in 8% and in 2% it can lead to this dysplasia can lead to gastric cancer. Now once we talk of corpus predominant atrophic gastritis, multifocal atrophic or multifocal gastritis, 10% people with lead lead to gastric ulcer. Now this can also lead to 90% of asymptomatic H. pylori infection or it can also lead to mild lymphoma. Now, heat H. pylori when present can has host genetic or responsible for host genetic factor, virulence factor, bone marrow deprived cell, Post immune response up to 50% then it leads to normal gastric micro which is very rare when it can just lead to then I'll tell you all the sequences that has occurred I've already talked about clinical feature hematomasis or it can present hematomasis as blood in vomitus and it should be differentiated from hematosis, which the blood which is coming from the lungs. But in hemat hematomasis, the blood as it is present with the, it is reacted with the hydrochloric acid present into the stomach is usually brown in color or black in color. Whereas in hemat hematosis, the blood is coming from the lung and is is oxygenated and hence its color is is usually pink or red. Now, melina. Melina is defined as dark colored stool and it has usually a dark color or it is usually black colored stool. It may be hard or it may be soft or it may be some very loose. Anemia. Anemia is defined as lack of blood, lack of blood cells into the circulating system or deprivation of RBCs into the circulation as the stomach is also responsible for conversion of ferrous, ferrous iron to the ferric iron and if this is not there then the anemia is usually usually supervised or it may be due to metamasis or melina what we call as upper GI blood loss and lower GI blood loss epigastric pain, nausea and vomiting, physical examination, physical ex examination, pelar can be seen in conjunctiva, oral cavity, mucous membrane, lips, nose, nails, skin, it is due to anemia or blood loss, it may be sudden or it may be gradual. Tachycardia. Tachycardia is when the heart rate and the pulse rate exceed more than 100 beats per minute. Hypotension is defined as when the systolic blood pressure falls below 90 millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure falling below 60 millimeters of mercury. Biological aspects there can be leukocytosis or there can be leukopenia. Now the diagnosis. How the diagnosis is confirmed? Upper GI endoscopy show, once it, upper GI endoscopy is done, it shows edema of the mucous membrane, mucosal hemorrhages, as you can see in the picture, frailability, congestion, erosion limited to the mucosa. 
once a biopsy is taken and histological examination is done, examination is done in this picture that is high, high power microscope. This is gastric mucosa showing infiltrated by the neutrophils. This is an acute gastritis. Now, re GM reveals infiltration of the lamina propria with non mononucleoside nuclear cells. PMN leukocytes extravasation of blood into the mucosa. This is the picture which is shown in this histopathological examination. Radiological examination much less reliable in detecting acute erosive gastritis as there may not be any good effect until a radiogram or upper GI sonography is done. Now how to diagnose H. pylori invasive microscopic examination of the organism in gastric endoscopic biopsy specimen non-invasive non-invasive methods are usually used urea cyst the specimen containing H. pylori is kept in a urea rich medium the urea is produced by the organism converts the urea to ammonia thereby making the media alkaline. This can be confirmed by using an indicator like phenol, phen, phenylnephthalene which turns red in alkaline material. Breath test. Patient is given 13C or 13-14C level urea. It is converted to 13C or 13C level ammonia by urease produced by H. pylori and detected in the breath of the patient. ELISA test. This is done to detect antibodies for H. pylori. A stool antigen test, non-invasive method, very good. Tests like urea breath test and stool antigen test are used to assess, respond to treatment. Treatment. General support to measures. Treatment includes omission of the offending agents such as non steroidal anti inflammatory and steroidal and inflammatory drugs, acid separation agents such as H2 blocker antagonist and proton pump inhibitors, prostaglandin analogs such as vasoprostol, more useful for prevention and cytoprotective agents such as saccharal fate. Recommended treatment for eradication of H. pylori, helicobacter pylori. The first line therapy is proton pump inhibitor twice a day. This is the standard dose. It can be combined with chlorothromycin 500 milligrams twice a day, spaced at Amoxicillin 1 gram separated by 12R or we can have a combination of proton pump inhibitor twice a day, chlorothromycin 500 milligrams twice a day, metronidazole 400 milligrams or 500 milligrams twice a day. If this fails, then we can have proton pump inhibitor twice a day metron resolve 500 milligrams twice a day, tetracyclines 500 milligrams four times a day. If still this fails, treatment tailored to individual antibiotic sensitivity, then its sensitivity should be done and then it should be continued. Or we can have a standard proto proton pump inhibitor twice a day, metron resolve 500 milligram twice a day, amoxicillin 1 gram twice a day. The second line of treatment, proton pump inhibitor twice a day, bismuth salts 120 milligrams four times a day, matron resolve 500 milligram three times a day, tetracycline 500 milligrams four times a day. Or we can go for a proton pump inhibitor twice a day, metronidazole 
500 mg twice a day, tetracyclines four times a day, spaced at six hours, or we can go for proton pump inhibitor, metronidazole 500 mg twice a day, amoxicillin one gram twice a day. Now we have got the third line of treatment, empirical rescue therapy or treatment tailored for individual antibiotic sensitivity. A sensitivity and culture test can be done and the person should be given antibiotic, it, should, it is most sensitive to. Phlegmarous gastritis. Bacterial infection of the stomach or phlegram gastritis is rare potentially life-threatening disorder. It is characterized by marked and diffuse acute inflammatory infiltrates of the entire gastric wall, a time accompanied by necrosis. Elderly individual, alcoholic, in patients suffering from acquired immunodeficiency syndrome are most commonly affected. Organisms associated with this entity include streptococci, staphylococci, astrachia coli, proteus and haemophilus species. Failure of supportive measures to antibiotic may result in gastrotomy. Gastrectomy. Chronic gastritis. Chronic gastritis is identified histologically by an inflammatory cell infiltrated consistent primary of lymphocyte or plasma cell with very scanty neutrophil involvement. Superficial gastritis. The early phase of chronic gastritis, the inflammatory changes are limited to the lamina propria or surface mucosa with edema and cellular infiltrates separating intact gastric glands. Atrophic gastritis. The next stage is atrophic gastritis. The inflammation infiltrated extend deeper into the mucosa with progressive distortion and destruction of the glands. Gastric atrophy a final stage of gastritis. Granulomatous structures are lost and there is paucity of inflammatory infiltrates. Endoscopically, the mucosa may be substantially thin, permitting clear visualization of the underlying blood vessels. Now, granular gastritis. Gastric granular morphological transformation in chronic gastritis, intestinal metaplasia, conversion of gastric gland to a small mucosal gland containing goblet cells. The metaplasia changes may vary in distribution from paucity of fairly extensive gastritis involvement. Intestinal metaplasia is an important predisposing factor for gastric carcinoma. Now we'll be talking about chronic gastritis also classified according to the predominance site of involvement. The type A, body predominating form autoimmune, involve the body and fundus of the stomach associated with pernicious anemia due to presence of circulating antibodies against partial cells and IF. It is also called autoimmune gastritis and these patients can also have pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is nothing but deficiency of B12 due to gastric IF. Partial cell antibodies and atrophic gastritis are seen in 
ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट ओवर द एज ऑफ सिक्सटी थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट विथ हाइपोपैराथरॉयडिज्म ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट विथ एडिसंस डिजीज और विटिलिको इट इज नॉट दैट दीज दिस इज अ सिंपल एज इट इज ऑटोम्यून एज वी ऑल नो ऑटोम्यून हाइपो hypothyroidism is also there additional diseases can be a, and vitiligo is usually taken as hyper and uh, autoimmune anti if antibodies are more specific than partial cell antibodies for type a gastritis and presence and it is present in more than 40% of the patient with pernicious anemia also the risk of stomach cancer in patient with type a gastritis and pernicious anemia is a, pernicious anemia is a three times the general population so this is the precursor or we can say this is the predisposing factor to get a malignancy of the stomach and the patient who are suffering from type a autoimmune gastritis should be followed very carefully so that they don't go land up into the costuma type b enteral predominant type more common form of gastritis increases with the age of conversion to pan gastritis in 15 to 20 years being present in up to 10% of the person aged more than 70 a strong association with h pylori and type b gastritis chronic gastritis and h pylori organism this is the slide where we are showing senior silver stain senior silver stain of superficial <coughs> gastric mucosa showing abundant dark stain microorganism laid over the atypical portion of surface endothelium note that there is no tissue invasion chronic reflux of pancreatic biliary secretion bile acid leucocystin lysolecithin multifocal atrophic gastritis gastric atrophy and subsequent subsequent metaplasia has been observed in chronic h pylori induced gastritis this may ultimately lead to development of gastric adenocarcinoma zero positivity for h pylori associated with a 3 to 6 fold increase in red risk of gastric cancer infection with h pylori h pylori is also associated with depend development of an a long grade b cell lymphoma gastric melt syndrome now how to diagnose by biopsy of gm provide the most reliable means of identifying and classifying the stridus several biopsies of suspected area when safe and possible are recommended it is not that you take a biopsy from one side it may be negative because it it is not if you take a area that you suspect is most likely to present the diagnosis and give us the best report for the histopathology now the treatment aim at the sequelae and not at the underlying inflammation in type a gastritis pernicious anemia vitamin b deficiency regularly should be given regularly parenterally as it is not absorbed through oral cavity it is not absorbed through stomach eradication of h pylori h pylori of recommended even if pud or a low grade mal syndrome is not present should undergo surveillance endoscopy every 3 years so as to that if they are getting gastric carcinoma miscellaneous forms of gastritis now we'll be talking about lymphocytic gastritis characterized histologically by intense infiltration of the surface epithelium and lymphocytes primary effect body of the stomach 
consists of mature T cells and plasmacytes. Etiology. Well, the etiology is not, not well understood and still we are trying to find out what could be the etiological factor. It has been described in patients with celiac sprue. No specific symptoms. This is the best, this is very bad as the, it, and hence they are not diagnosed very early and as they don't have symptoms, they don't report to the hospital. And uh, endoscopy. Thickened fold over capped by small nodules that contains a central depression or erosion. The, this form of disease is called veriloformis gastritis. H. pylori probably play no significant role in lymphocytic gastritis. So, that, and hence there is no need to eradicate H. pylori. Therapy with glucocoid, glucocorticoids or sodium glycate has obtained unclear results. Result may be positive, result may be negative or result may not show any change in DT disease given in due time and in a full course. Eosophilic gastritis. Marked eosinophilic infiltration involving any layer of the stomach, mucosa, mucolaris propria or serosa. It is characteristic of eosinophilic gastritis. May range from isolated gastric disease to diffuse eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Enteral involvement predominant than G body fundus. Symptoms. Epigastric pain, nausea, vomiting with the clinical manifestation of systemic allergy. CBC, marked eosinoph eosinophils into the blood endoscopic, predominant edematous fold. Gastric biopsy reveals extensive eosinophilic infiltration to the wall of the stomach. And the treatment, well, it is eosinophilic. The response would be the best if the patient is put on glucocorticosteroids. Granulometrous gastritis has been observed with Crohn's disease. Involvement may range from granulometrous infiltration to frank ulceration and stricture formation. Several rare infection processes can lead to granulometrous gastritis, including histoplasmosis, candidiasis, syphilis, and tuberculosis. <coughs> Usually cause include, unusual cause includes sarcoidosis, idiopathic granulomatous gastritis, and eosinophilic gastritis, granuloma involving the stomach. Diagnosis, repeated endoscopy and biopsy and cytology. Occasionally, a surgically obtained full thick biopsy of the stomach may require to exclude malignancy. Russell body gastritis. Mucosal lesions of unknown etiology has a predominant endoscopic appearance histologically. Presence of numerous plasma cells containing Russell bodies that express kappa and lambda light chain often associated with H. pylori infection, can be confused with a neoplastic process, but it is benign in nature and has a natural history of lesion is unknown. There have ever been cause of res resolution of the lesion when H. pylori are eradicated. It gets, you don't have to put any other medication, just eradicate H. pylori and you will get a remedy of it remedy to the patient. Complication of chronic gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, mucosal atrophy and interstitial metaplasia, dysplasia, gastric cystica, gastric cystica, gastric and denocarcinoma, low grade B cell lymphoma, gastric malt and lymphoma. 
these are this is summary then we can just talk what are the symptoms pain in the stomach or pain in epigastrium it, patient can have nausea and vomiting patient can present at heart pain patient can also present at heaviness into the gastric region the causes unhealthy food habits uncontrolled use of medicine preferably non steroidal anti inflammatories h pylori infection and alcohol now how we diagnosis we diagnosis by gastroscopy and we treat it by proton pump inhibitor and mucosal protection agents or antacids now this is how gas this it looks like now we'll be talking how gastritis occurs when non steroidal anti inflammatories and alcohol is responsible for causing gastritis multiple organ failure burns multiple organ failure trauma and ischemia this causes erosion and hemorrhagic gastritis it is usually seen in burns alcoholics acute ulcer can lead to bleeding and can lead to perforation helicobacter pylori infection chronic acute atrial gastritis it is type b it causes gastrin increase in gastrin acid secretion normal or it may be increased it causes chronic gastric acid and duodenal ulcer too can cause reactive gastritis epithelial metaplasia and carcinoma now antibodies how does it act it can have h it can have parenteral it can h atps inhibitors now we will talk of atrophic fundal gastric gastritis it is type a it is pepsinogen that is responsible acid secretion leading to gas increase acid decrease acid secretion leading to increase gastric secretion and then ultimately hyperplasia or it can lead to g cell hyperplasia also ultimately leading to epithelial metaplasia and carcinoma down in if in secretion is decreased cobalamin absorption is decreased then it is long if it is long term it is cobalamin deficiency leading to pernicious anemia so a patient who is suffering from chronic gastritis should be treated for h pylori should be treat any medication that can be stopped if not necessary to give up a long life non especially non steroidal and alcohol should always be stopped trauma at times can be prevented but at times it is not there should be proper circulation to the stomach and there should not be any ischemia leading to as it can lead to bleeding and perforation so our aim is to not to treat but also give a permanent support to a patient if it is h pylori we should always or if it is type a gastritis all patient undergoing such therapy should also receive b12 intramuscularly or parenterally every life long treatment for eradic eradication of h pylori any of the following combination can be given for 14 days now how to treat it now we have got drugs what we call as a triple therapy bismuth subsalicylate plus metronidazole and it metronidazole 500 mg or 400 mg bd and tetracycline second line of treatment is ranitidine ranitidine bismuth citrate tetracycline chlorpromycin or metronidazole it is uh now we talk of triple therapy bismuth subsalicylate is given two tablets four times a day 
metronidazole 400 mg 3 times a day, tetracycline 500 mg 4 times a day. Now the second line, ranitidine bismuth citrate 400 mg twice a day, tetracycline 500 mg 4 times a day, clarithromycin and metronidazole or metronidazole 500 met clarithromycin at interval of 12 hours or metronidazole 400 mg at interval of 8 hours. Omeprazole plus omeprazole 200 mg twice a day. Clorthromycin 250 to 500 mg at an interval of 12 hours. Metronidazole or metronidazole 400 mg TDS or in place of metronidazole amoxicillin Insulin can be used as 1 gram twice a day. Quadruple therapy, amaphrazole plus, it is given to 20 milligrams once a day. Bismuth subsalicylate -sal plus, 2 tablets 4 times a day. Metronidazole plus tetracycline, metronidazole 400 milligram TDS and tetracycline 500 milligrams 4 times a day. And they, as we are giving antibiotics, tetracycline, we should say, also think that there should not be any antibioma. And any patient who is on such a therapy should be supported with probiotics. Thank you very much.